things and Jeff really outlined them as we spoke about them today. There are two sides of the cross. Oh, there's thousands of dimensions of the cross. But there's two sides that we're going to talk about. On the one side that we discussed a few weeks ago, you are totally, completely, 100% forgiven of every sin. Past, present, and future. Isn't that a nice deal? Isn't that awesome? That your forgiveness has already been bought and paid for? Your reconciliation to God is not dependent on your holiness. Your holiness is dependent on his righteousness. So that one side was so good. We went through so much in the ninth and 10th chapter of Hebrews. And then on the second side of the cross, we said this. This side, all of your sins are dealt with, but that's all I heard growing up. I never heard this other side of the cross. This side, the penalty of sin is taken care of. But I never realized that he had also given me in the cross the power of sin, the victory over. Not just the penalty, hell. Not just the challenge of not being forgiven or having to pray to ask for forgiveness every single time. No, my forgiveness is not incremental. My forgiveness is one time because the cross was done once. And the other side of the cross is now to take that power against every sin. And, now, and again, as I know we say this a lot, it's not sins plural, not the action. It's sin singular, the power of it. Now, if you're born again, you have no sin in your spirit. You are pure, you are holy, you are righteous. But in your natural man, you're not. You have to bring what is yours in the spirit into the natural realm by faith, and that's what we're going to look at today. Let's go ahead and put up on the screen that I am temporal and eternal graph, if we could please, right now. That's no problem. Okay. All right. In the unseen realm, we're going to look at two realms. We have an eternal realm and a temporal realm. Both of those realms exist at the same time. But now we're going to look at them as though they're separate. They're not, but we're doing that just in terms for the teaching side of it. Now, in the I am eternal, it is the unseen realm. But what is in that realm? Go ahead and bring up some more of the aspects of that I am eternal. It is the realm of the Spirit. You are complete in that realm. Jesus is complete in that realm. There's wholeness in that realm. Keep going. It is timeless. It is changeless. It's what Jeff was singing about. In my Father, on my Father's side, He's the Son of God. On my Mother's side, He's the Son of Man. So on this side, on the eternal side, there is no time. Time is a created thing. All your loved ones who just passed away. I always like to go back to my dear sister, Peggy Montgomery. Peggy just died a month or two ago. Peggy's in timelessness now, so she can't grow older. There's no time there. And the reality of who God is is now right before her. But can I tell you, that same reality is ours now because the Lord's Prayer says, Thy will be done on earth temporal as it is in heaven eternal now here's the key in the eternal it's the word i am remember what happened with jesus when he was about to, or he was going to be arrested and they came to apprehend him and he said i am and they all fell down because the power of his name the same name that God spoke to Moses in the burning bush, and the bush was not consumed. The fire did not burn it up because it is not a burning fire. It's an exhilarating, exuberant fire because it's the fire of his life. So when he said, I am, they all went down because he was bringing the eternal into the natural. Now, look over on the other side. Let's go on the, uh, the temporal side. In the spiritual side, it's I am. I am righteous, I am holy, I am sanctified, I am blessed, I am favored, I do have God's love, I do have his peace, his joy. Those are I am's. Jesus declared in the book of John alone seven I am's, and he had seven miracles. He was always declaring that. But here's what he was doing. 
he was bringing the eternal into the natural. Because in the natural, it's I am becoming. I already I am all those things in the spirit. In your spirit, you are all those things and nothing can change it. In the natural, it is I am becoming. Now, let's look at some of those aspects. Bring some more of those up on the screen, would you? Can you get them? In the natural realm, we have process. You becoming transformed by the renewing of your mind is not an instant thing, obviously, or you wouldn't be here this Sunday on a rainy day. There is needs in your natural person. There is needs. Jesus had needs and is about matter. In that realm, there is no matter. But Jesus came to bring us what it means to be a man in matter with God on the inside of him. Go ahead, some of the other ones. We have time. We are changing. Isn't it just a, an amazing thing to think? Every single thing you see, touch, hear, or smell is always fading away. Everything in this realm will die. Everything in this realm will pass away. Everything in this realm has a time limit affixed to it. And it has appearances. So then I go back to Jesus. What was important about him? He was willing as the Son of God, like what you sang, Jeff, to then become the Son of Man. And why did he do that? Here's why, folks. He had to be our mediator. There was only one person who could mediate. Now, if you have a good lawyer and a good mediator, you watch all the Morgan and Morgan ads on TV, you know why you might pick Morgan and Morgan? Because they know everything there is to know about car accidents. They've done, according to them, thousands of them. So you want a guy that's going to mediate for you that knows the situation, knows the circumstance, knows what's going on. So Jesus was able to mediate because he knew both sides. The eternal side, because he is what? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So he totally has association with that side because he is God. What did he say out in the wilderness to the enemy? He said, devil, you'll not tempt the Lord your God. So he was totally familiar with the eternal side, which he had to be to be our mediator. But then he had to come to earth as a baby and to die for us on the cross as a man. He had to do miracles as a man because he had to mediate a mediator. I took a class once trying to be a mediator. I thought for a part-time job, I'd be a court mediator. After I looked at it for a while, I said, no way, Jose. And folks didn't want to be mediated. <laughs> they just wanted to be mean. But see, a good mediator would have to know both sides, would have to experience both sides in order to mediate. So Jesus had to come to this earth. If he wanted to bring us to the Father's side, as Jeff sang, to the eternal side, he would have to be able to be familiar with and totally a part of both sides. So here he is, a son of God, but what's the other son of man? Also from John, the first chapter. And the word became and dwelt a, ah, so he was familiar with his mother's side. The father's side, the son of God. The mother's side, the son of man. Why did he do that? Why did he just come down and give blanket forgiveness to the whole earth? Because he could not mediate a new covenant without having both sides and at him being totally familiar and impartial. A good mediator has to be impartial. So he was partial to his father, but also partial to man. He stood in that place. Now look at some of these verses on mediation, and then we'll come back over to Romans 6 in just a minute. Look at 1 Timothy 2, verse 5. And while we're going there, when we think about the eternal and the temporal, on the eternal side, you can't access it. Peggy Montgomery now does not have to use faith to access the eternal. She's in heaven. So Peggy doesn't have to use faith anymore. 
But for us in the temporal, where there is time, it changes, there's matter, there's appearance. In order for us to access that side, we have to have the thing that pleases God the most, which is what? Faith. One time in a service, I asked the people years ago, I said, uh, how many of you want to please God? All the hands up. And then I said, how many of you are pleasing to God? One kid. <laughs> now, they didn't understand grace, obviously. Because you're pleasing to God because of what God from the eternal put into the natural by you, by faith, receiving that. So see, ladies and gentlemen, on that <coughs> father's side, there is your identity. But on your mother's side, you have to use faith to bring it into activity. You have to believe. Now, who is the one that helps that? It's the Holy Spirit. Because it says over in 1 Corinthians 2, 12, Now we have not received the Spirit which is of the world, but that which is of God, that we may know the things freely given to us. That's the upper deck. That's the eternal realm, where by the blood of Jesus Christ we have access by faith, and he's our mediator. Ladies and gentlemen, any of you Catholic folks, you know, I was in the priesthood, you all understand that? Mary could not be a mediator. I'm sorry, because she wasn't on my father's side and on my mother's side. She was simply like all you and I. She was only on a mama's side and a natural daddy. You could only be a mediator, as this verse says, if you are totally and completely in both sides. For there is one God and one mediator. Not Mary, not the saints. Can't pray a rosary. Sorry, guys. It doesn't access when you're praying your rosary. I tried it for years, but hear me. You're not accessing any mediator. There's only one. Mary wasn't sinless, and Mary didn't come from that side. She was born of a woman. There is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ. He became a man so he could mediate a new covenant for you. Wow! He wanted you to enjoy all the blessings of that covenant. So he said, I'll be on the father's side, but I'll also be on a mother's side. And now that I can now be on your side, Without that, it's impossible to negotiate the terms of the new covenant unless there was a mediator. Oh, that's your identity. And ladies and gentlemen, up there on the Father's side. Thank you for that song today, brother. It's just right on. <laughs> on the Father's side, that's the place of our fulfillment. On the temporal side, y'all, with all those words there that Jennifer just put up a minute ago, You'll never find full, full, you'll never find, that's a lot of words, full fulfillment. <laughs> You're not meant to. It's only on the Father's side where your righteousness, your peace, your joy, and the fullness of what Brother Jim was talking about, the glory of God is yours. Now you by faith, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, access the eternal, which is here, into the natural every moment of the day. That's what we want to receive from the cross because he had to become your mediator by death. That's the other part of it. Look at Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9.15. I love this scripture. Hebrews 9 and verse 15. And for this cause, he is, that should be a capital H really there, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Wow. He couldn't be that if he wasn't on father's side and on mother's side. That by means of death. See, the fullness of this negotiation is he had to take your death so you could have his life on father's side. If he didn't take your death on mama's side, there would be no way you could have his life on father's side. Somebody had to stand as your substitute. That's what we're celebrating in this Easter season. That by means of death, I like this next part too, for the redemption of the transgressions. Don't raise your hand if you've ever transgressed, but all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
But when you do sin, do you reach to the natural, to mama's side, to try to fix your situation? Or do you, by faith through the Holy Ghost, go and take the Father's side that Jesus has appropriated by his death? So the moment worry over a tornado would start to hit you, and you'd start to see your mother's side rising up. I'm worried. I'm scared. Oh, God, what's going to happen? But all of a sudden, in that moment, you'd remember, I can, by the mediation, the mediatorial ministry of Jesus, accept the Father's side. Because it's in me. It's right there. There's no work to it. There's no effort to it. It's a now, this moment, circumstance. So if that storm starts to blow up out there, I can tell you on the Father's side, he will tell us how to handle it, how to walk in it, not to fear because of it, and how I will bring you through it. Anthony, that's what's going to happen on your house. Yes, you have some of the wind knock some stuff down, but Anthony, you're on the Father's side. And so because of that, by faith, he can say, Holy Spirit, Show me everything that Jesus accomplished by his mediatorial work that now applies to my circumstance. The redemption of the transgressions, the uh, fifth line, that were under the first testament, the old covenant. They which are called, that's all of us, might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. That's the Father's side. That's everything that Jesus did in the total agreement with the Father to allow you to come into what Peggy Montgomery sees now, but you've got it in Hogansville, Georgia on the 28th day of March, 2021. You have it completely in you because of the mediatorial ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for being our mediator. Look at Hebrews 8, 6 and 7. Hebrews 8, 6 and 7, another wonderful mediation. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Ladies and gentlemen, we all talk about promises, what David was teaching on the promises. None of them could ever come to pass without Jesus being just like the Father, but then just like you. He was tempted in every part just like you. Why do you think he had to go out in the wilderness for 40 days? Because he needed to be tempted in every part just like you so he could be a good mediator. If he hadn't gone out there for 40 days, with no food, with no water, with nobody talking to him, dry, desolate, hot desert to where his mother's side could not save him or help him. He had to be totally like you and I in that place as a man dependent totally on the Father. Look what the scripture says. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry by which also he's the mediator of a better covenant. Why is it a better covenant? The old covenant only had Moses as a mediator and he really wasn't a mediator. He was just a man. Praise God for what he did, but he couldn't mediate life from that side to this side because he never took death because he wasn't the perfect lamb. So now... The covenant is really not between you and God. It's not dependent on you at all. It's dependent on him. It's dependent on what he accomplished. That's why it's a better covenant. It wouldn't be a better covenant if it was dependent on you. If you receiving any of the great things of the covenant was dependent on your activity, your performance, your goodness, your kindness, forget it. You would only receive it once every 20 years because all have sinned and come of the of the yeah so i've got a better covenant based on better promises because i've got a perfect mediator who understood both sides one last scripture on this this is not the last scripture <laughs> i've looked at clouds from both sides now all right hebrews seven twenty five. Hebrews 7, 25. Wherefore, he is a... Is this thing popping too much here? Is that bothering y'all? Get a little, uh, John, I'm going to switch back to a handheld. I, or, or maybe I ought to put a... Did that put it? I pulled it away from you a little bit? Okay. I'm getting like some good old Pentecostal preachers that start to spit in the microphone, and after a while, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> Do you feel the glory? <laughs> 
Wherefore <laughs> he is able also to save them to the, everybody say that word, uttermost. Why is it the uttermost? Because it's not just the one side of your sins forgiven. Now as he gives you the access to the upper deck, to where everything that Jesus was is now yours for the asking by the envoy of the Holy Spirit and through the faith, and it's not even your faith. It's his. My Lord, this is too awesome. You don't even have to work for any of this. It's established by faith. You already have that. It's established by identity. He's already given you that. And now he gives it to you as your complete fulfillment. I'm not fulfilled in this job I'm in. Access the upper deck. Access the Father's side. Because on the Father's side, Jesus said, they that come to me will never hunger. They that believe in me will never thirst. Full, complete. That's what's on that side. And you can do it at the drop of a hat in the middle of an interstate that's crowded when you want to blow your top and you'd like to get upset and you're mad at your brother-in-law because of what he said or you're upset because of the sin and the mistakes you made. In that moment, you have a salvation that is to the uttermost. Not just, oh God, forgive me. He's already forgiven you. But now, oh God, thank you that you have put in me by the resurrection the power to walk in victory in a situation that used to take me out. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing, oh, here we go, he ever lives to make intercession. That doesn't mean he's down on his uh, uh, knees interceding. That means he is the perfect mediator for you. So how is he mediating? He's already taken and understood all the stuff you have from the mother's side. But then he brings to that everything that he has brought as the perfect mediator from the Father's side. Again, that's why the Lord's Prayer. Folks, one scripture that brings this out so well that we discuss here a lot is Hebrews 10, 14. For by one offering he has, now watch, here's the Father's side, perfected forever. That's the upper deck. That's the spirit realm. He has perfected forever. Now watch the mother's side them that are being sanctified. I am up here. I am becoming here. I am already righteous, but now my behavior is becoming holy because I'm taking from the Father's side in here. How can I take it? By the work of the cross. Who makes it real, vibrant, alive, and totally practical? The Holy Ghost. He makes it alive and real and vital and usable and practical for every minute, every situation, every circumstance, every second. Because he is your perfect mediator. Look over at 1 Peter 2, 23. Well, I'll just talk about this scripture as just simply a healing scripture. 23, 24, and 25. But it's more than that. Look here. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. Any of you in here, don't raise your hand. You ever been reviled by somebody? I mean, just plain old-fashioned Kentucky blasted out in your face. How'd you do? Don't answer that. You ever had somebody just say ugly, horrible things about you behind your back? You ever had situations to where your good name was reviled? You ever had people gossip about you and say things about you that weren't true? Or maybe they were true, but they did not need to say them anyway. And they did, and you found out about it, and it hurt you and angered you and made you upset. Can I tell you those days are over with? If you'll hear what we have to say about the mediatorial ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, he has already taken that situation as a mediator that understood it, but did more than that, took it, but then did more than that, died for it and did more than that, rose again with a whole new ability to stand against that. As the old worship song goes, What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. God, I get excited on this rainy day just talking about this stuff. So when you're reviled, you can do the next part of the scripture. 
he reviled not again. Remember I told you the story about one of our exchange life teachers out in Denver? What's his name, Jill? The one that's out there in the Denver office that we always talk about. Anyway, this one brother was going to a uh, basketball game up uh, where we used to live, up in Fort Collins, Loveland area, Colorado State. And uh, he was trying to get a ticket because Colorado State was playing uh, Texas, I think. Anyway, he was going to go to the game. Tickets were already sold out, but they said, hey, we got a few left. So they were standing in line. And uh, he's standing behind a guy who seemed real anxious, maybe even a little high or whatever it was. And uh, this guy just started to get super irritated. And he turns around to this brother, who's a counselor, and says to him, if I don't get any tickets, you ain't getting no tickets either. These people are stupid. I ain't going to deal with these crazy. In a lot of words we can't say here in church. They're crazy people. And then a guy in the booth knew the counselor. Here's this fellow who just gave him this. And the guy in the booth said, hey, I can't remember. We'll just call him Don. Hey, Don, come on up. I got a ticket for you. <laughs> so he comes up to get the ticket. This guy that had just thrown the fit punches him in the face. This fellow said the entire sixth chapter of Romans went through my mind. <laughs> I am dead to this. I am alive to God. I have the likeness of the resurrection. Anyway, in that moment, seriously, he said, all of a sudden, this guy turns around. You ain't getting a ticket if I ain't getting one. Whew. Right upside the head. He quoted this scripture to himself. Here's this crazy, erratic guy slapping him in the head over a stupid basketball ticket because he had a friend who said, hey, I got one for you. Come on, go on. And that infuriated this guy. Well, here was the deal. In his mind at that moment, he had been so used to walking in the Spirit. What's walking in the Spirit, ladies and gentlemen? It's not just being spiritual. It's not just praying in the Holy Ghost, which is a wonderful thing to do. No, it's more than that. It's always knowing that you can access the Father's side. Even when on the mother's side you've been hit, you've been hurt, you've been defiled, you've been laughed at, you've been used, you've been talked about. And in that moment, you know what he did? He said, well, I don't know why you did that to me, but I forgive you right now. He said his face was killing him. This guy reared back and popped him. He said, I, I forgive you right now. But he said in his heart he wanted to kill the guy. But you see, he didn't handle it by willpower. He didn't handle it by, I better not do that. He handled it by the Father's side. Because on the Father's side is your eternal identity. Well, what's that eternal identity? Fruit of the Spirit, which are love, joy, peace. Next one, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. In that moment, he remembered who he was and applied it to the circumstance, and the situation didn't have to take him down. Here's the good news. He got to share, with his whole face turned red and beat up, the gospel with the guy who broke down in tears. Because he reviled not again because he chose the father's side. This, ladies and gentlemen, is called the exchanged life. You exchange because the mediator has taken both from God and from man in every circumstance and now has given you the opportunity to be victorious. And so if you're reviled, you won't have to revile again. You can speak the truth in love and you can grow up unto him in all things. So I'll read the whole thing again. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. Oh, that guy up in... Ford Collins was ready to threaten that guy. How dare you lay your hands on me, you piece of, you know. He liked to have said all kind of things. But instead, he gave him the peace of God instead of a piece of his mind. Wow, what a testimony. You say, that's impossible to do. In willpower, it is. It sure is. Think about, a, I was thinking this last night. I grew up next to horse farms and cattle farms. 
So think about a bull being out in the pasture. And that bull chases everybody that comes in that pasture. And the guy that owns the ranch comes up to the bull. Let's say the bull can talk. And says, bull, you're full of bull. <laughs> you got to quit chasing the people that come into this pasture. You need to stop it. You hear me? You just got to stop chasing folks. Bull says, okay, I'll, I'll act like a lamb. I'll act like a lamb. <laughs> I'll just be a lamb. I'll just be, I'll, I'll just be like a lamb. Just be like a lamb. Well, he tries to be like a lamb for a while. And somebody comes in there with a red handkerchief coming out the back side here. And all of a sudden, the lamb gives way to the bull. And the bull starts to charge. And the bull comes up and is ready to knock the guy down. And the guy that owns the place said, I'm taking you out of here. You didn't do what I asked you. I told you to not do that. So the bull feels all bad. Well, I tried to be like that. And he says, quit trying to be like that. Just realize that you can't do it. So I'm putting you in another pasture. Ladies and gentlemen, here's that simple, stupid analogy. Here's the thing. The bull still had bull nature. He would have to have had his nature changed even though he was trying to be like a lamb. He couldn't because his nature had not been changed. He did not have the father's side. So ladies and gentlemen, when you come to a situation that anger, that bitterness, that frustration, disappointment, hurt, loneliness, lust, whatever it might be, that tries to hit you as the power of sin, not sins, but the power of sin, in that moment, you know you have a whole new nature on the Father's side. And Jesus has come to appropriate that for you on the mother's side. So now you can access both. So now when the heavies of life and the addictions of life and the disappointments of life hit you, you now have a mediator that says, if you're reviled, you don't have to revile again. You're dead to that. And you're alive to my new, as Brother Jim said, glorious life. Is this some kind of just preachy thing? This is the most practical thing I could tell you. This is victory 101 by the mediation of Christ, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed. Here we go. Look at this, y'all. If you don't get anything else out of today, here we go. Look at this last part. But committed himself to him that judges righteously. How does he judge you? You're righteous. How does he see you? You're holy. How does he see you? Absolutely perfect in him. Do you have perfect behavior? No. Do you have a perfect spirit on the Father's side? But now, praise God, because of the mediation of Christ, I can go to get those things that are on the Father's side that Jesus bought and paid for by his blood on the cross, and now I can bring it over to Mama's side. Y'all still out there? Okay. Next verse. Boy, I took a long time on that one. <laughs> Who is own self? Wow. <laughs> Here it is. Bear our sins in his own body. What a mediator. What a mediator on the tree. That we, being dead to sins. Now, see, that's what that guy in Fort Collins would have to say. Here he is, hit in the face by a crazy, probably drug addict guy. And in that moment, he's saying, I'm dead to this. I'm dead to a phony response. I'm dead to getting my way. I'm dead to self-centeredness. I'm dead to life being all about me. I'm dead to it. But now look what it says. That being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. Everybody say these last ones. By whose stripes ye were healed. Now is that about the healing of your body? Sure it is. But it's also about the healing of your soul. It's also about the healing of your attitude. It's also about the healing of your relationships. It's also about the healing of your thoughts. It's also about the healing of your stress, your distress, your depression, and your frustration. Wow. His own self. Bear those on the cross. Look over at Romans 6 for a minute. We'll just do a few of these verses. We'll save a lot of this for Easter. Romans 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What's the only reason you'd continue in sin? Because you didn't know how to access the Father's side. 
You didn't realize you had grace, or, or, or faith rather, the faith that Jesus has already given you, the persuasion of God. And you didn't realize that you had a Holy Ghost that brings you into the knowledge of all that you have. What do we read in Hebrews 9? He gives you the fullness of inheritance. So shall we continue sin? Is this an excuse to sin? No, this is the reason why you won't sin. I know we say that all the time. Next verse. God forbid. Look at this now. Here we go. How shall we that are dead live any longer in sin? How can you? The only reason you would is because you didn't access the Father's side. You didn't realize on the Father's side that you already had total forgiveness left and complete power in Christ and authority on the right side. So you'd only live there long, uh, any longer therein because you don't proclaim your identity. My dad, is, I, I talk about dad all the time. Me and dad didn't even get along, and I talk about him all the time. If he hears me, thank you, dad. My dad was a Kentucky fanatic. We're from Kentucky, the Lexington area, so everything was University of Kentucky. My dad played football for them way back in the 30s, so it was all about football. So he had tickets on the 50-yard line. Uh, he went to the basketball games at midcourt. Uh, he was there when Coach Rupp was, was coaching. I mean, he, everything was about Kentucky. So when Daddy... And Mama took a trip to Ireland, England, France, and Germany when I was a sophomore in high school. I was going to a Catholic prep school. And they went over there. And when Daddy came back, he'd tell me a lot of the stories about what's going on. And here was half of what he said. He said, son, my dad was a Kentucky colonel. If any of you are from Kentucky, the governor of the state can make you a Kentucky colonel. So Daddy had been made by Governor Happy Chandler. The, the uh, Kentucky Colonel. My daddy was a Kentucky Colonel, bless God. So he said, I said, Dad, how was, what you think about Dublin, Ireland? Oh, son, it was great, but I let them know I'm from Kentucky. <laughs> I let them know I'm a Kentucky Colonel, son. Yes, sir. What'd you think about the Eiffel Tower? Oh, it was good, son. But as I went up there, I told one of the people that I go to the University of Kentucky football and basketball. Okay, good, Dad, that's great. What did you think about London and the London Bridge? Oh, it was good, son. But while we were up there and we stayed in that hotel, it was a fancy place. I hated the food. <clears throat> they didn't have any hot dogs or hamburgers. But you know what? I told them I'm a proud Kentucky colonel. My daddy's identity was fixed in Lexington. It was fixed at UK. It was fixed in him being a Kentucky colonel. So what am I telling you? Wherever dad was, his identity went before him. And every circumstance of your life, friends, does your identity of your age, your looks, your background, your mistakes, your failures, your disappointments, your successes, or your achievements, is that what goes in front of you? Or is it the fact that the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ has given you the father's side? And now while you're on mama's side, you're taking daddy's side into mama's side, and you're a victor, and that's your identity. And that's your fulfillment. And that's the richness of the glory of God on the inside of you. So how shall we live any longer in that? Next verse. Know you not that so many of us as we're baptized into Jesus. This is not just baptism of water. Now it can be. But this means something different. Baptized into Jesus Christ. Watch this. We're baptized into his death. Folks, I want you to know my dad was baptized into the University of Kentucky. He was in school there. He was an alumnus there. He was at football there. He was at basketball there. He even went and watched some of the track meets. He was everything about UK. is the only thing to go. So everywhere he went, he was baptized into Lexington. No doubt about it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are baptized into the cross of Christ that we are celebrating this Friday. We are baptized into it. <laughs> totally saturated in it. The Greek baptizo means this. It means totally identified with and dependent on. My dad would have fallen apart if he didn't have those tickets on the 50-yard line of the University of Kentucky. And he lost half of the games anyway. But anyway, he was going to go whether they win or lose. He's going to cheer and yell. You know why? Because <laughs> he was baptized into it. He identified with it. And he found his dependence. Boy, I remember one time, oh my goodness. He had a, 
Daddy owned a real estate company. He had to do a real estate sale that was supposed to have been over on one day by 2 o'clock because they were going to go to an evening game on Saturday up at Lexington. The sale went on until about 6 or 7 at night. I thought Daddy'd go nuts. He couldn't go to the game. We didn't have cell phones back then. We're talking the 60s. And so he had his secretary go over and tell those guys that are going up there, hold me a place. I might make it a little bit later. And he's like, there's this crazy sales keep going. All these people can't make their mind up, put things they want to buy and what they want to do. And I want to go see the game. What is this? And he got ugly with me. He got ugly with mama. And my mama came back to me and said, football ain't your God. <laughs> and my mama was a real sweet, gentle type lady. Didn't say that. She'd had about enough of daddy's stuff. <laughs> he was totally identified. He was baptized into that. That was his whole thing. Folks, you are baptized into something that gives you all forgiveness, but then gives you all the power of heaven brought to earth in Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. What a mighty God we serve. No, you're not so many of us that were baptized. So here it is. United with him, baptizo. Totally connected and united. Immersed in. Saturated in. Now listen to this one. This is really good changes the essence of if I had a piece of white cloth and I dipped it into some blue dye the essence of that thing is still cloth but it's now blue so when you're baptized into his death your essence as a sinner is over your essence as a worrier is over your essence as a complainer is over your essence as an accuser is over because you've got the perfect mediator who said, I'll come and take all your mess on the mama's side. So now you can come to the father's side. Even if you're standing in line to get a basketball ticket and somebody hits you in the face, you'll revile not because I have given you the power to walk in victory. Every circumstance you are baptized in to Christ Jesus. Then Catch this, verse 4, and I promise this will be the last verse. I promise. i got to start telling the truth from the pulpit. <laughs> That's from the father's side. That's from the father's side. <laughs> Look at verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. I'm so glad you said that today, Brother Jim. By the glory of the Father. The power of His glory. Folks, it didn't really take off His glory to make all the universe, all the stars, all the constellations. He just set them out there by His hand. But it took the glory of God, the power of God, the fullness of God to raise Jesus from the dead. Oh, my gracious. That same glory. It's in you and me. Oh, my God. That same glory. Greater than it took to put Uranus out there, to put Saturn out there, to put all the constellations out there. A glory stronger, greater, and richer is in you. Wow. That like as Christ was raised from the dead. Well, listen to this about being buried. This sounds a little morose, but it's still the truth. We're, we're, we're dead with him. We're buried with him. When you think about burial, it's permanent. Your old nature is permanently buried. And if it starts to come up, you start with your mouth to declare to it. Speak to it. Your old nature is not there anymore. So over in Colossians, it talks about the circumcision of the spirit. It means that your spirit is cut off from your flesh. So that your flesh cannot come and taint it. That perfection, father's side, cannot be tainted so you can always grab it. That's like a bank account that you'll never have to pay a fee on. You can always grab the fullness of what's in there. And once you take something out, it's already replaced. That's the father's side. Because it's new every morning. New every morning. Newness in the covenant that we're talking about means it's always new what if you went out to your car what if i went out to my 2015 tundra and every time i drove it it became a 2020 last year this year became a 2021 next year it'll become a 2022 and then the year after that 2023 and in 2022 when the republicans get back in i'll have another thing <laughs> oh don't clap <laughs> that's on the mother's side <laughs> 
Now you see, when you're buried with that, then it's permanent. It's immovable. It means a buried person that's buried is not seen anymore. Your old flesh doesn't have to be seen anymore because Jesus has been a perfect mediator for it. Buried means it's never to return. I don't have to let those old attitudes of even yesterday return because why? The mediator has already taken them. <clears throat> a buried person, get this, can do nothing for themselves anymore. Now you, on the father's side, realize that on the mother's side, you are incapable without allowing what he has accomplished in you there for you to walk in it here. You can't do it. You can't stop the things that you're trying to stop. You can only go to the Father's side by faith through the Holy Ghost because you are now dead with Him, buried with Him. And the last part of that is that you're now raised with Him. So remember the three things that we said to start out. No, reckon, yield. No, I know that I am dead with Christ. Okay, well, I've had people in the seminary that I went to school with, myself included, that knew it and didn't act like it at all. That's the reckoning part. That's something we'll talk about next Sunday, going up to the 11th verse. You reckon yourself to be dead indeed unto God. So when I reckon it, I say it's mine. Here'd be a simple, simple, silly analogy, a sandwich. Let's say I got a sandwich in front of me. So I get a sandwich and I go, that's a sandwich. I know it. I now say it's my sandwich. I reckon it. I eat the sandwich. I reckon it. I now present myself as full. No, reckon, yield. No, I know I'm dead with him. I'm buried with him. I'm raised with him. Reckon, I come into the circumstance I'm dealing with. And at that moment, I start to reckon it. Not reckon, oh, I need to try hard. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I'm so bad. Oh, I'm not uh. No, I reckon and I present then myself that this is who I am. I had a guy a couple years ago who says, Pastor, none of you know him. He said, I got three problems with my eyes. I got a problem with porn. I got a problem that I see myself as worthless. I got another problem that I feel so judgmental against a lot of people. I just see a lot of people, they, they probably hate me. I said, brother, are you born again? Yes. Will you admit you're struggling? It's important to admit it. You can block it and just say you don't have it, and then you go right back to the same old trash again. Yeah, I admit it. Are you willing? to have a great exchange go on on the inside of you? That everything that you struggle with, Jesus took. So I said, let's do this. Present your eyes as instruments of righteousness unto God. Quit saying, I'm so bad, and I can't stop. I said, that's the mother's side. I didn't use that, but that's exactly what we're saying. Now take from the mediation work of Jesus that you now can know you're dead, reckon you're dead, and now present your members, 613 of Romans, as dead. And watch that sour attitude be changed. And watch how the victory will come. So here was our prayer. Here's how he prayed. Father, I submit my eyes to you as a living sacrifice. And you say I'm wholly acceptable. God, I don't feel wholly acceptable unto you. I feel like a worthless failure. But I present myself like you say on the Father's side that I am. I present myself to you as a living sacrifice. You say I'm wholly and acceptable. So I'm going to say what you say. And I'm not going to be conformed to this world because I'm being transformed by the renewing of my mind because I'm accepting that when you died, I died. When you were buried, I was buried. And when you were raised, I was raised because you being a medium. Now, he didn't pray all that. He just said, Lord, I present my eyes to you as a living sacrifice, as instruments of righteousness. He flat broke down in tears because the condemnation came off. The trying to fix it mentality came off. The try harder, do better, get with it, pray more, and just be in church. That'll give you victory. No, it won't. It'll make you want to leave church. But now, I find the Father's side is my side because he let his side be cut open and the blood and water flowed out. 
the blood for the left side, sins forgiven, the water as a type of righteousness for the right side, the power to walk in his victory. Stand up with me today. Let's pray. Worship team, come up. Father, everybody's eyes closed just for a minute. Let's just take in what we said. All I can do, Lord, is lift up holy hands and exalt you for all you've done for me. Mm. All I can do is say, bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name because Lord you decided to come down on my mother's side and take all my mistakes all my failures all my challenges all my hurts all my disappointments and you have decided by you being a mediator to then give me the fullness of the father's side I thank you for that Lord I confess today with this congregation online and in this building that I know we're dead, buried, and raised. I acknowledge that, Father. But I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you give us the unction to reckon it in every moment of every day, in every circumstance, in every situation. You help us to reckon it. And then, Father, you ask us to present ourselves as instruments of righteousness, not instruments of the flesh, not instruments of of condemnation but instruments of the Spirit of God walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the desires of the flesh because the Spirit takes you on the Father's side I thank you for it Lord and I thank you Lord that you heal us and you show us a way that is a better covenant on better promises because of a perfect sacrifice. Holy Spirit, will you make this stuff clear to us today? Will you make it real? Will you show us the places in our life, not where we've been bad, because you want to reveal your righteousness to us. So will you show us, Holy Ghost, since you show us freely all things for us to receive, how to allow this into every niche, every cranny, and every place in our life. Jesus be Lord of all. Jesus be Lord of all. Where I've put other things in the place of that. Jesus be Lord of all. I thank you for it. Look up at me real quick. We haven't even mentioned everything from the cross. Because there's so many things that take us all year long. But God wants to heal you. It was only a week or so ago. Tim Godfrey stood up here after having everything that looked just like a heart attack and God healed him. God restored him. God brought him back. It was only just a week or so ago that Judy Matthews went to the hospital and everything she had, she should have been out of it. There she is, right over there. She was healed. Tim was healed. I was healed. Carrie was healed. But Jim's been healed. How many in this place have been healed of something in your life? Come on. David Baird gave the most. David, that testimony about the healing of your back was so powerful on Wednesday night. I have shared that all over the place. David, how many years did you have that? 40 years with back problems. And by him seeing that the promise is the person of Christ, his back is healed. So can we take a moment in this day I won't take more than 60 seconds. I know it's raining. You've got to get on out of here. Let's take everything we've said about both sides of the cross and now apply it to by your stripes. You are healed. Who needs a healing in your body today? It's right where you are. Just lift your hand up. I'm going to have you look around. Go over and pray with Brother Philip, would you? Okay. Keith, you're going to be healed, brother. Keep your hand up, everybody. And listen, if you don't feel comfortable with somebody laying hands on you because of today, just tell them. It's okay. Don't lay hands on me. Just pray for me. All right. Brother, you're going to get healed today. I see it right in your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to go back right here.
Chris, go right back here with Keith. Sister, right back here. One of our new folks here today. Somebody come over there. Yeah, Diane, would you come over and pray with her? Everybody got somebody praying for them? Let's go after it. Here we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, this work of the cross is a perfect work, a complete work. So right now, I just thank you that Danny's being healed in the name of Jesus, that Keith is being healed in the name of Jesus, that Joey's being healed in the name of Jesus, that Philip is being healed in the name of Jesus, all the other folks being prayed for today. I thank you, Father. Just as sure as David Baird was healed after 40 years of back problems because he realized that he has a perfect covenant with based on better promises that the word of Christ is made real. Do that, Lord, in every life, in every home, in every family. In the name of Jesus, be restored, be restored, be restored, be restored. In the mighty name of Jesus, accept your healing. Take it as your own. Believe it and proclaim it today. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, go ahead and keep praying for a second. Me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord while you're praying. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless. His holy name. Anybody got a challenge in your back that you need healing in your back today? Even if you've already been prayed for? Back healing. Back coming up. Jeff, Jeff, come on down here a minute. David, David, would you come up and pray for Jeff and his back just to impart to him what you have had? Anybody else with a back issue? I want you to let David pray for you. Can you pray with Jeff over there today? Jeff, your song was right along, brother. That good old country song was a goodie today, and thank you for it. On the Father's side is your healing. Let David pray with you today. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is His holy name. Sing it one more time. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. Bless the If you need prayer, we'll stay up in the front. Be careful as you go home. See you Wednesday night. David's teaching. God bless you. Board members, see you at 3 o'clock. You need look that. at the screen. <laughs> Whoa, look at the screen, everybody. The new baby. That's Santana. That's hard. Wow. Santana and the baby right there. Solomon. Hallelujah. In all of his glory. <laughs> 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 That's RJ on the front. That's great. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome.